Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can convert a JPEG to a vector using Illustrator and Photoshop. Before we get started on this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you where you can find an image of an American flag and an image of an eagle, and they're both photos. And I'm going to show you how you can trace them in Illustrator so you're turning bitmap images or JPEG images into vectors. And we're actually going to create this illustration from the two pieces that we're going to trace. For our tracing project, we're going to use this image of an eagle. And the reason why I chose it is because you can go and get this image yourself. It's available from a site called Morg File. And if you go and search for eagle, this is the eagle image. And you'll just click on it and you can download it. One of the things with Morg file is that you're allowed to download and use these images. The only thing that you can't do is just distribute the images in their current form. So the entire idea of the site is to give you images that you can do things with. So I have the eagle open here inside Photoshop to start off with. And we're just going to prepare the image in Photoshop for the tracing in Illustrator. So I'm going first to the crop tool because I want to crop this a little bit more closely because I don't want all this feather detail on his shoulder. I really just want the face because that's really the interesting part of this image to me. So once I've cropped the image, I'm going to look at the background because if I can get rid of that, then it's not going to be involved in the tracing. So I'm using the quick select tool here. It shares a toolbar position with the magic wand tool. And with a reasonable size brush, I've got like a 30 point brush here. I'm just dragging over the background. I'm just making a quick selection with the quick selection tool. Now I've selected the background, what I want to keep is the eagle, so I'm going to choose select and then inverse. And that just inverts the selection, so we have the eagle and not the background. Now the selection I've made is pretty quick and dirty, so we can improve it by going to select refine edge. Now if you've ever looked at this and thought, oh, I don't really know how to use it, don't worry because this one's really easy. What we're going to do is just click on this icon here and we're going to choose Refine Radius Tool. This just lets us tell Photoshop where we didn't do such a good job. And we're just going to paint over the very edge. So we're going a little bit into the white feathers and a little bit over the edge to capture all these places where the blue sky is still there. And Photoshop just looks at the edge and goes, OK, well, we'll just clean that up for you. We need to do it in here too. And just paint over and Photoshop's cleaned this up. And if you wanted to, you could go down the very side of the beak too. But you want to take some of the eagle as well as some of the background because it's the edge bit that you want Photoshop to have another look at. So we're pretty good now. I've got output to selection selected here. So I'm just going to click OK. Now we've got our selection, we just want to mask out the bird. So we're going to, at the very foot of the Layers palette here, which of course you can get to by choosing Window and then Layers, you're just going to click this icon here. It's the Make a Mask icon or Add a Mask icon. So we're just going to click on that. And now we see that the bird is already isolated for us. Now before we head to Photoshop, it'll help us if we do a couple of things to this photo. One of them is that there's a lot of detail here in the bird, and if we could flatten out a little bit of that detail, life would be a little bit better. So I'm just going to zoom in here a bit, and we're going to apply a filter, and it's a median filter. So we're going to Filter, Noise, and then Median. Now the median filter is a really interesting filter. And right now I've got applied the wrong thing, so let's just cancel out of there and let's go and actually select the bird. And let's try that again. Filter, noise, median filter. This is a much more interesting filter. And what we're looking at here is a, just a general smoothing of the bird. So when I click on the thumbnail, you can see the original. And when I click away from it, you can see the smoothing effect that's happened. Now you want a really small radius because as soon as you start getting up to any size radius, stupid things start happening to your photo. So what you want is a radius of about two. One or two will be perfect. And I set mine to two and it's just a little bit smoother. So I'll click OK. Now the other thing I'm a little concerned about is that this eagle's head is really white. And when we head to Illustrator, it might be a little bit difficult for Illustrator to actually pick up some detail. So we're going to apply a curves adjustment. Again, if you're not used to using this, don't worry, it's all very simple. We're going to choose Layer, 
new adjustment layer curves. So that's layer, new adjustment layer curves. And then you're just going to click OK. And this is the curves dialog here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of darkening to the white areas of the eagle. So we're just going to drag the top part of this curve down a little bit. So we want a little bit more color in here. And that's all that we need. So we can just close that dialog. If we're happy with that, we can merge this. So I'm just going to click on this layer here and I'm going to press Control or Command E. And that just merges the effect down onto the image. So the bird, the eagle, is now darker than it was before, giving us a better object to trace. Now we want to take just the eagle, not the background, with us into Illustrator. So I'm going to go here to the mask and I'm just going to drag the mask onto the trash can. And look what happens. Photoshop says, OK, I'm going to delete the mask, but would you like me to apply it to the bird on my way there? And we'll go, yes, thank you. So click Apply. So now we have our isolated bird. So I'm going to Control or Command, click on the thumbnail here, and choose Edit and Copy. And now we're on our way to Illustrator. In Illustrator, I'm going to choose File and then New, and I'm going to create a new document. So I'm just going to make one that is 500 by 500 points in size. It doesn't really matter what you use because these are going to be a vector trace. And I'm going to use RGB as my color mode and just click OK. Now I have my eagle on the clipboard because I copied it out of Photoshop. So I'm now ready to go edit and then paste. And it's pasted into this illustration here in Illustrator. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger while I'm here. But you can see that 500 is probably not a bad size for that document. This is a bitmap image. So if we were to look at the image here in Illustrator, we're going to see all the typical bitmap shapes that we would see in any bitmap image in Photoshop. And what we've come here to do is to make this a vector. So we need to trace it. And Illustrator has the tools that we need to do all this work for us. And Illustrator already thinks that it can help because it's already shown us the image trace options because we've got a bitmap here. So I'm just going to click on Image Trace. And this is what you get. By default, Illustrator does a black and white trace. And generally, it's a less than satisfactory trace. It's not what we want. But this gives us access to this dialog up here, the Image Trace panel. So we're going to click to open it. And there's an advanced option here. So you're just going to click this triangle to open the advanced options as well. And you're going to turn off Preview. Illustrator very, very seldom puts the preview checkbox turned on. And usually that's a real nuisance. Well, in this dialog, it leaves the preview checkbox turned on. And it's the one time when you probably don't want it to be turned on. Because if you leave it turned on, every change that you make here in this dialog will force a retrace. And we really don't want to retrace until we've got our settings pretty close to where we want them to be. Here we have our mode. So we can trace in grayscale, color, or black and white. Let's go for color. Now we can set the number of colors. Now 30 colors is quite a lot. If we want a fairly simple trace for our eagle, we're actually going to bring the colors down. So let's try something like 15 or 16 just to start off with and see what we get. Now of these advanced options, these allow you to get a more accurate trace and a less accurate trace. The less accurate trace is going to be a bit smoother. It's also going to be faster. So the trick here is to take these sliders in the right direction. So here, if you choose high, you're going to get a tighter fit. Well, we're going to go low. And with corners, if you choose more, you're going to get more corners. So we're going to go less. And then the last slider is going the opposite direction. So with noise, we're going to get less noise at a higher value. So that means less smaller traced elements, more bigger traced elements, if you like. So generally, these sliders work. You want these two in the same direction and this one in the opposite. So if you want lots of detail and you go high, more, and then noise to less. Here, we're going totally the other way because we want a more simple sort of project. We want to ignore white. So we're going to click on Ignore White. And we're ready to go ahead now. So we're just going to click Preview. And we'll wait as Illustrator does the trace for us. And there's the trace that we've got. 
Now where you might want to make a few changes is here in the colors. You'll find that by increasing the colors a little bit, Illustrator is going to retrace every time you increase the colors and you may get some detail in the illustration that is more pleasing to you. So I'm just taking it up to 20 here and let's do a preview on that. So you could experiment with the colors here until you get a trace that you like, but this is an extraordinary trace. These are all vector shapes. You can see that they're nice smooth lines and they're smooth lines because really that's what I chose in these dialogues here. I said to Illustrator, I want smooth paths. I don't want lots of corners and I don't want a lot of noisy, a lot of small pieces. I want big pieces. Once you've got the trace that you're happy with, you're ready to go. So you can just click this check mark here to close that dialogue. But you need to expand the image. So we need to turn it from permanently from a bitmap image into a vector. And we do that by clicking expand. And here we have the paths. So you can see that these are the paths that Illustrator has drawn for our eagle. And if we were to go object ungroup, then we could ungroup these and make changes to them. But since this is what we came here to do, there is a traced eagle here in Illustrator. It's a vector illustration. Each of these are vector shapes now. So we've gone from bitmap to vector in a very short period of time, and we've got an absolutely awesome result. Now to finish off this project, what the eagle really wants is an American flag behind him, because an eagle like this really suggests America. So I've gone to morgue file and looked up US flag and I've grabbed this image that I'm going to use behind my eagle. Now I'm going back to Photoshop and I'm going to process this in Photoshop and then take it to Illustrator to trace. I've already got it open here in Photoshop. Now this image will need to be resized down because it's quite large. So I'm going to start by going image, image size. And I'm just going to make it 500 pixels wide and just click OK. It's a much smaller image now, so it's going to trace a lot more quickly and it's going to fit more into the image that we're actually going to be working with. So I'll choose Filter and then Noise and then Median. I want to flatten out the color a little bit with a two pixel radius, so I'll click OK. I'm going to do Select All because I don't need to mask this one because it's an entire image. And then I'll choose Edit and then Copy. I'm going now to Illustrator to finish off. So I'm opening Illustrator, File, New, again a 500 point by 500 point image, RGB color. Let's just click OK. Let's do Edit Paste. Here's our image. Let's run the trace on it. It's not the trace that we want. Let's go to the dialog. Let's set these values pretty much the same way as we had them set before. Just going to turn Preview off. I want to trace in color. And I want just a few colors here because most of this is just red, white, and blue. At this stage, I don't want to ignore white because white is actually part of the flag. I think I could have a little bit more detail in this, so I'm going to wind up the detail. Because I really want these stars to look like stars. And when I'm happy with that, I'll just close the dialog. And I'm going to expand this. And then because it's still selected, I'm going to choose Edit and then Copy. Now back in the Eagle, I'm going to choose Edit and then Paste to paste the flag into the image. Now it's gone on top of the Eagle, but we'll sort that out in a minute. I'm going for the Select tool. I'm just going to drag it up here to position it roughly where I want it to be. And I'll hold Shift as I drag the bottom corner to make it as big as the Eagle image because it needs to sit behind the Eagle. I'll press Control or Command-0 to square everything up. Then I'm going to the Layers palette and I'm just going to look and see what I've got. Well, here is the Eagle and here is the flag. So I just need to go and get the Eagle and just move it above the flag. And I can just click away from it. At this point, I could continue and clip the flag to the artboard. So I'm going to go and get a rectangle. So I'm going to click on the Rectangle tool. Going to make a rectangle the size of the artboard. I'm going to move it down so that it is above the flag. I'm going to select it and the flag, and I'm going to click Object Clipping Mask Make. And that just clips the flag to the size of the artboard. So we have our 
finished piece of vector art. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.